Hey, what's up you guys? In this video, we're gonna work on this shotgun shell in 3ds Max and Substance Painter. Uh, and if you want to get your files, go to Patreon to follow along with me. <clears throat> All right, we're gonna start off working on this shotgun, shotgun shell using, uh, of course, a simple, uh, simple object such as a cylinder because we always start from something basic such as this one here and uh, we're gonna build our way to creating the uh, complex result that we're gonna get in the end so we're gonna create a cylinder with probably 18 to, to 20 maybe 16 size and we're gonna start using the um, the <clears throat> the edge extrusion method uh, in 3ds max which is a very popular way of getting things done especially when we have uh, something a little bit complicated or something that we cannot do or we cannot create using uh, some of the tools that exist in 3ds max so as you can see here i'm holding shift all the time because uh, this is a nece necessary thing to do uh, in order to perform the edge extrusion method sometimes i'm going to use the um the inset tool as you can see here uh set a um uh, an amount or um, a value that, that seems appropriate according to what you can see in the reference image or according to what you can see me doing here uh, in this tutorial and you're gonna, you're gonna be just fine also here I'm gonna use the um, uh, I'm gonna use the chamfer tool which is gonna give us some nice results if we want to make sure that we're gonna have some nice curves Uh, sometimes you're gonna also use the inset once again in order to close some areas so basically these are the um these are the main tools we're gonna use in order to create or get the result we're gonna get so uh the the edible poly modifier or the edible poly set of tools are complex and there are a lot of tools that we don't use because they are not necessary at this stage or in this particular uh, model to create this particular model but generally speaking there are a few tools that we're going to use a lot so these are going to be um, the extrusion uh, like the extrude tool bevel chamfer uh, connect cut and probably target well these are the most popular and the most used uh, tools in uh, the 3ds max edible poly modifier which is a very powerful thing that uh, 3ds max has okay here up here we are trying to create uh, some nice details in the top of the uh, shotgun shell and uh, it seems like we're gonna try to uh, I'm not very sure how this is gonna uh, this is how this is gonna kind of gonna look like once we are done but um, we're gonna try to get as close as possible but uh, if we don't get it right the first time we have to go back a little bit and um, try to fix it or go back further than that and uh, the most important thing I believe is to create something that you're you, you're happy with and um, I, I, I totally cannot at least not always um, kind of be satisfied with something that I, that I know is uh, terrible in quality so uh, I'm gonna try different things in order to make it look a little bit more uh, like what we have in the reference image and of course in order to get the, these reference images uh, you're, gonna, you're gonna find them in my patreon also you're gonna find the alphas and uh, some stuff related to the tutorial depending on which tier you are uh you you use you, uh, you you kind of uh you're using all right so um here you can see me that uh i backed off a little bit and went back to fix some issues and uh because as i said before probably you're not gonna get it right get it right the first time so what you what you're gonna do is you're gonna try to go back and try to make it look as good as possible according to to your standards of course uh, 
Okay, here I'm going to detach these polygons here because I want to add floating geometry. That is a very important thing to do in, in order to create some details um, in the outer uh, kind of edge of this shell here. And um, uh, it seems like we need to chamfer these edges a little bit in order to, to duplicate them uh with of course having um an angular correct angle because we want to actually keep this kind of this sphere spherical we don't want it to have more edges but less details and less uh, is gonna kind of it's gonna look less uh less smooth if we don't use the uh the chamfer tool it's gonna look edgy and stuff so whatever so here, here as you can see, it seems like uh, we need to extrude these edges using the, uh, the extrude tool or the bevel tool. And we're going to use uh, extrusion by polygon and we're going to change um, the amount and the value of extrusion as you can see here. Uh, it's not going to be that difficult to do, but we need to be a little bit careful. We don't want to... Uh, increase the value too much and we don't want it to bring it too low because we want it to be visible but uh, not too much All right, so uh, we are making a good progress relatively quickly, as you can see, and uh, we're going to change probably the material, as you can see, and um, change the color a little bit as well. And, of course, these de these details are going to be part of the, uh, the, the low poly, and we're going to cover them using the Noma map and some of the maps uh, that exist. Uh, or we're going to generate using Substance Painter. So uh, the most important thing uh, about these details here is getting the uh, the high poly right and uh, other pieces and the other pieces and the, um, the the other areas in the low poly are going to be deleted, especially these details up here. All right, we're gonna try a few things here. Probably we're gonna lower uh, these edges a little bit. If it's gonna seem right, we're gonna keep it. If not, we're gonna um, we're gonna uh, we're gonna bring we're gonna bring it to the way it was before. For now, we're gonna start creating creating the um, the box or the um, the container of these cartridges, and um, I think this one is gonna be the most important here in this tutorial. Uh, I think they are equally important, but um, in this one, <clears throat> I'm I'm gonna try to go um, a different route because I want to make it look a little bit more realistic. I can throw a box right there and bake the um, the high poly on the low poly, but um, I think I'm gonna go with the uh, with um, complexity here. So even though it's not gonna be that complex, it's gonna be pretty simple compared to what we possibly can do with other stuff and uh, that can blow your mind but uh, here we are uh, trying to create as you can see um, kind of the um, the sides and the polygons that actually make this box possible um, as I said uh, I'm gonna try to bring it as close as I can to what the real cartridges box look like so 
uh, we're gonna respect the real world uh, scale and the real world uh, dynamic of holding uh, this box so uh, I'm trying to consider everything I'm trying to actually try to put uh, everything into consideration and how this box is gonna be folded and stuff uh, so bear with me here probably I'm gonna um, go back a little bit and fix stuff every every once in a while so I'm not gonna be perfect at it be because uh, it's simply uh, something that um, that needs practice even if you're a 3d artist trying to fold even if you uh, even if uh, it's gonna be in in a real a real life situation probably creating a folded box is not gonna be that easy from the first attempt so we're gonna try to make it work All right, here um, we're trying to create uh, the box. Uh, keep in mind that I'm holding shift all the time. This is extremely important to perform the, uh, the edge extrusion method. All right. It seems like uh, we bring uh, we we now we are bringing this um, this box folding mission to to an end, and um, it seems like it is not perfect, of course. And uh, we're gonna try to make sure that we don't have a lot of overlapping between these edges here and these polygons, especially when we create thickness when we give it thickness. Right now, it is just um, a box that. Uh, there, its its faces have no thickness. But when we add in, when we add the uh, shell modifier, as you can see here, things can take a dangerous turn. So we gotta be a little bit careful, and um, uh, we we're gonna make sure that actually the thickness is not it's not that big. So uh, we're not trying to make it extra thick. But as you can see here, we are having a a difficult problem and the situation here does not look as as good as a uh, as we expected or at least as I expected so probably we're gonna try to fix the situation real quick All right, uh, as you can see here, I just deleted some unnecessary part, parts of, um, of this box and uh, this actually gave us uh, more free space and um, kind of uh, helped us to make uh, the, the, um, the modeling of this box less easier and less uh, actually more possible.
All right, so uh, when we are done with the basic modeling, we are going to uh, duplicate uh, this cartridge right there, this cartridge. And of course, we're trying to create uh, uh, some layers, one for the high poly and one for the low poly. This is extremely important because from now on, we're going to go the low poly route and the high poly route. And this is extremely important because right now we are in the middle kind of we are in the medium poly uh, state or uh, now we're going to work on the high poly and uh, to do this we have to add uh, we have to add um, support edges and we have to add also the turbo smooth modifier which is going to make the high poly smooth and um, as good as it's supposed to be All right, so uh, the, uh, the support edges process in, um, in this cartridge right right here is going to be a little bit um, tricky because we want it to have that soft look and at the same time we have to support the necessary area. So uh, we're going to try some things here uh, in a second, but uh, remember that this process sometimes depends on trial and error and um, if we see that we are supporting too much we're gonna remove the support if not as you can see here this is a very bad result this is a strong indicator that we need to go back a little bit and um, remove the support edges All right, so um, like this without any support, it does seem like it is better. Uh, right now, as you can see, we are using the, um, the Swift Loop tool that is very important in order to create support edges. It's very quick sometimes, it's a little bit rusty and slow and doesn't work uh, uh, the way we want it to, but it is very effective regardless of these issues. When it comes to this box here, um, I believe that the process of supporting the edges here is going to be, has to be a little bit tight because um, the edges here uh, are kind of a little bit narrow and uh, thin. Um, the, um, the margin for error is very small, so because we are kind of trying to um project a thin surface on top of another thin surface that is going to be uh, so the the high poly surface is going to be supported using uh, the edges and uh, over there we're going to put a turbo smooth modifier the turbo smooth modifier is going to try to smoothen or make the surfaces smooth in the process it's going to bend stuff that's why the support is going to be has to be tight because we don't want the projection to kind of be a mess so uh, if you know what i mean i want to keep the top, the low poly, the high poly on top of the low poly in order to get a, a good bake 
so if you see if you see that this support is not as tight as uh, as it should be you can add extra edges or double the support if necessary and uh, I think that this is gonna work uh, just fine also here we're gonna run to um, a problem in baking in substance paint here which is um, kind of um, surfaces are too close and projection has um, has some difficulty difficulties to be uh, actually to be done correctly so um, we'll try to reduce the rear and uh, rear and front uh, distances when baking if not we're gonna have to deal with it and fix it later in Photoshop or something All right, as you can see here for, for the low poly, what, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to remove all the unnecessary surfaces and the unnecessary polygons and vertices. And as uh, for right now, I'm going to try to make sure that all of these here are going to be removed because, as I said before, they are going to be replaced using a... Uh, uh, using a normal map that we're going to generate in Substance Painter. Alright, so uh, right now we're going to start the process of UV unwrapping. Uh, for this model or these two models here in particular things are going to be very straightforward and direct so we're going to use a box modeling here and um, uh, or box UV and I should say rather and as you can see here there there are some pieces that are that are scattered all over the place and what we need to do is actually organize them a little bit and throw a uh, checker texture as you can see here in order to see if there are any distortions in the mesh or, or something of that sort uh, if not we're gonna be ready to go to the next piece which is gonna be uh, the other uh, the other one which is this one here and we need to do uh, we need to apply a UV unwrap modifier to it and uh, I like to use the box unwrapping tool because it is straightforward and um, I don't like to think too much about what I'm doing because usually I'm listening to something or something like that when I'm working and uh, for the most part I kind of go with the flow and uh, when I wake up to what I'm doing I find uh, I find myself that I unwrap the thing and uh, it's ready to jump to the next thing so I, I like to keep things automatic and stuff so uh, here uh, we're going to stitch select all the pieces sometimes I use the um, the obvious uh, methods of doing stuff like right click stitch selected if you see me doing this as you can see here obviously I'm using the shortcut which is shift S from the keyboard for stitching uh, the selected edge uh, there are also some uh, some shortcuts that I don't really explain in my tutorials because as I, as I said before, I can't afford to uh, 
use the traditional ways all the time. Sometimes I use the obvious tools and stuff in order to make it easier for people who don't know what the hell is going on. But uh, for the most part, I kind of use shortcuts in, in order to work faster. Uh, for the most part, the process of UV unwrapping is about stitching the uh, the, uh, the the polygons or the UV aisles that are separated and scattered all over the place, and it's or about organizing your pieces. And these are the the two kind of uh, time-consuming things that you're gonna do in order to create. Uh, the the UV template in the end. Uh, of course, sometimes you're going to be faced with uh, with the situation where the uh, the surface that you're going to try to UV unwrap is going to be a little bit complex, and you're going to need to think about it. You need to be uh, very alert to what you're doing. Uh, especially, uh, I would say that in the beginning, if you are a beginner to UV unwrapping. I think you're gonna have to be present and focused 1000% because uh, there are a lot of things that are gonna pop up in front of your um, uh, kind of in your frontal cortex and you need to think about it using your logical brain. Once you are used to it and um, you, you unwrap a couple of hundred uh, or probably thousands of pieces it's going to be very automatic, you're going to do it without even thinking about it. Unless you are going to be faced with something new that brings you back to the moment, to what you're doing. And in order to think about it and solve it and make it happen and stuff. Other than that, it's going to be very easy and uh, you're going to get bored of it uh, in the long run. But um, yeah, this is um, take it or leave it. This is uh, part of the deal. Of course, things get tedious over time. That's why, from time to time, I would like to challenge myself with kind of complex pieces that I enjoy working on. Uh, this does not mean, of course, that I don't enjoy working on something like this because it's um it's fun. This is what we chose to do for a living, and uh, I love it. But too much of it is gonna be. <laughs> kind of uh, makes you a little bit tired and psychologically and uh, physically, of course. But you need to push through, of course. All right, so uh, after we uh, finish UV unwrapping all the pieces, we, um, we attach them and we apply a UV template to them once again. Uh, this will allow us to see all the pieces in one place, in one UV, uh, in one UV modifier. And um, what we are going to do right now is we're going to organize everything inside the UV template. This is going to be easier said than done because um, I would say that there are degrees to which you can organize the UV template. You can, um, you can organize, literally you can organize the UV template using the automation tool uh, in two seconds. The result uh, might be um, for the most part it's gonna be ugly it's not gonna be it's not gonna look good uh, it's gonna appear that to the to a viewer to an artist especially an experienced artist experienced artist is gonna appear from the first second that it is not actually done by uh, a human being let's just say not alone a professional artist and uh, the other option you have is just to spend 10, probably 5 to 10 minutes throwing away, throwing these pieces inside the, uh, the rectangle here and trying to make it as, as good as possible in the frame time or the, uh, uh, the time frame you have. Uh, the last option is 
to spend a little bit of time in order to make sure that it is beautiful and uh, organized and someone who looks at it is going to appreciate the effort, effort you spent. Uh, probably his, there is going to be someone who is going to work on it um, uh, kind of after you in the pipeline or um, probably um, someone who's going to look at it he, he's going to say that you are kind of you kind of appreciate the level of um, proficiency and um, kind of how you actually uh, consider and uh, respect your craft and also if you spend extra time trying to polish and make sure that everything you work on is going to be nice and clean um, over time it's going to be easier and you're going to actually raise your standards and um, when you when you when you when you raise your standards i believe that it's a little bit hard to go back to the early to the old ways and kind of lower the bar and stuff this is very difficult to do especially in art you can't go back that's why it is very good to try to raise the bar and kind of take the level up even uh, go to the next level even if you spend extra time probably you're gonna be a little bit more tired and stuff but it's gonna be worth it all right so for now um, we're going to of course for the sake of this tutorial I didn't spend uh, that the amount of time necessary to polish everything you know what what the deal is in this situation so uh, we don't we are now going to working on the naming process and trying to rename all the pieces in this um, um, when it comes to these two two or three pieces uh, so, uh, as you can see, um, we're going to select the pieces according to what they do or what kind of material or how they are separated and stuff. So, this is actually depend. This actually depends for the most part, for the most part, on the situation. And um, you're going to have to use a suffix. One is going to be for the high poly. And in this case, I'm going to use underscore HP. For the low poly, it's going to be underscore LP. And uh, you're going to name each piece uh, according to what it does or what it means. Uh, for example, if someone is going to be working on your model kind of after you and you deliver to him this model, uh, to consider your the process of naming you you, you have done successful is uh, is going to be successful and clean and professional if the if the, if the person who works on this project after you is going to find it easy to continue and to know and to actually realize and know which every uh, every and each piece what they mean and what they stand for so for now we're going to go to substance painter after we export the files of course and we're going to import them right now so uh, i assume this is easy that's why i don't show it in my tutorials so uh, i'm going to import the low poly here which i exported from 3ds max in uh, an fbx format and right now we're going to do a test bake uh, testing the bake is important because we don't want to spend um couple of hours or an hour or 30 minutes or something that is not going to work so uh bring the high poly big by mesh name suffix hp for the high poly lp for the low poly we're gonna of course check only the normal out the normal map and we're gonna do the test bake if the test bake works it means that we are we are on the right path and we need to continue or proceed accordingly to what according to what we have done before so right now we're going to check all the uh, all the boxes use super sampling anti-aliasing and we're gonna change some parameters according to what you see me uh doing here and um it seems like um 
there are few settings that I use all the time and this is true because for the most part baking is is an automatic process and it's an automatic thing that we don't do manually the uh, the software is doing the heavy lifting we just have to adjust some little bit of parameters in order to get it right okay so we're gonna do uh, some baking after the baking is done I am here and it seems like we've got a nice bake but we there are some minor uh, issues that we're gonna talk about later um, kind of as I said before the um, these surfaces are too close even if you change some of the parameters necessary in order to get it right it's probably not gonna be fixed that easily so uh, for now we're gonna start adding some folders and I like working with folders because uh, this way is gonna uh, this way you're gonna be able to remove some materials without the need to apply a mask to each and every material you're gonna create a folder with a mask which is gonna determine um, the area or the section of the model uh, the textures inside the model inside the folder are gonna be applied to this is extremely important if you if, if you don't use folders folders especially in substance painter I think it's going to be really hard to um, uh, work efficiently and effectively. So uh, this uh, this texture here, this material, you're going to find it in Substance, in Substance Share. Uh, it is called uh, Card Box, and um, or or cardboard, I should say and uh, it is a very beautiful uh, material you're gonna find it in substance share as i said you're gonna download it go to algorithmic file and uh, go to probably shelf search for shelf shelf file and throw it in there in, in the material folder and um, reload your substance painter software and uh, when you're gonna when you're gonna open it you're gonna find it in material uh, shelf Anyways, uh, I'm I'm here changing some uh, some parameters here, and uh, as you can see, this material is excellent for this job. We're gonna add, uh, as you can see, a black mask, and uh, select the area that we need. And as you can see, uh, this uh, this mask, as I said before, is gonna determine uh, the area that the um, the textures inside the folder are going to be in. Uh, for the next folder we're going to use um, or for the uh, next uh, fill layer that I created right now we're going to use this one here that um, this um, uh, this alpha that I created and um, we're gonna set some parameters and we need to throw it uh, we need to throw it in the right place and um, use it as a stencil all right throw it in the stencil area right there and as you can see it is um, it's now very easy to kind of print this looks like printing if anything else all right so uh, we're gonna choose an alpha and uh, we're gonna start painting the um, the text and the border around it. So this should be very easy to perform. It's not going to be that hard. All right, so um, as you can see here, we are trying to make sure that we are uh, kind of uh, polishing and um, uh, this process is very close to what we do when we uh, 
try to overlay a set of kind of uh, scripture or text on top of the surfaces and this is actually exactly what we are doing here and um, using a stencil is going to be very effective in order to get this done and um, uh, I think uh, using a text or font from the uh, the alphas that um, kind of uh, the Substance Painter software provides for us also is going to be a great idea but sometimes to save time and to make sure that everything is going to work smoothly uh, I sometimes use stencils and some alphas that I create in Photoshop or I download such as this one here this one actually comes with Substance Painter and um, the the bad thing about it I would say is that there are no numbers uh, underneath it and this is understandable because the uh, the number has to change every time and um, yeah this is very understandable but uh, for the most part it's a code bar has to have number underneath it and uh, for this reason I kind of brought a um, uh, a code bar that looks like this from from the internet from Google you're gonna find a lot of these if if you're if you are lazy and you find you gonna uh, you want to find all the files in one place go to patreon.com slash person touch or or go to the link in the description and you're gonna find all these files that I used in one place all right for this one here uh, it's gonna be very easy just um, just stamp it right there and you're gonna be ready to go like this and you can choose what whatever or it kind of it doesn't matter really what uh, what type of code bar you use just something that gives the illusion that this is something real manufactured by a real factory okay so next is gonna be uh, let's see what else we are gonna work on You're gonna add this uh, this bronze smart material, and this is probably one of my favorite smart materials in Substance Painter because it's very uh, interesting. It's uh, it's really nice to look at. Of course, we need to create a mask and select <clears throat> the polygons that are gonna be. Uh, part of the uh, part of this smart material and we're gonna add an aluminum material as you can see this aluminum material is gonna be uh, occupying a small section or a small part of our texture so it's not gonna be noticeable and we're gonna go uh, use F3 from the keyboard in order to go to the uh, UV template mode and uh, you're gonna see all you all your textures and UVs uh, in a flat 2d surface and this is exactly what we need to see here uh, just because you can select something in the uh, in the perspective viewport doesn't mean you can select it you can come here F3 from the, from the keyboard and you're gonna find it very easily and you're gonna really uh, make sure you're gonna make sure you're gonna make things happen uh, efficiently and really fast especially if the area you're gonna select is kind of separated you're gonna just select it completely in one second in the viewport probably you're gonna spend a good or two or three minutes to do it here sometimes if the uh, the selected area is very distinguished and is very separated from the rest of the pieces is going to be very quick to select for the most part
Okay, we've done the same thing here. So in order to save time, I paused the video and I've done it myself. Uh, for now, we're going to add the plastic material. So add a folder, throw the, uh, the plastic material, smart material in it. Add a black mask and we're gonna go to the polygon fill tool. Uh, try to select the polygons that are gonna be plastic. That are gonna be represent the plastic material. Change the color as you can see here to something that is green or something of that sort, something that is close to the uh, the look that we are trying to achieve here. Uh, bear with me here because uh, I'm going to try to do a few things and uh, I'm going to be confused myself here so just don't get confused along with me because uh, the objective here is just to create a fill layer and drop the um, the alpha on top of the stencil area to start, start painting over the stencil. So uh, the problem is I got a little bit confused because I was kind of creating the uh, the fill layer in the wrong area and stuff and then things got a little bit uh, messy so bear with me here just a few minutes I'm gonna fix this we're gonna find a um, <clears throat> a good brush or good alpha for for painting this um, this text underneath the, the cartridge. It doesn't seem to work because it's not in, any, in the right place and um, it's actually in the wrong folder probably as you can see. Sometimes you're gonna have, especially in Substance Manager, you're gonna have to pay close attention to what you're doing especially when things get messy and um, you start adding a lot of folders and a lot of materials and a lot of masks and stuff. Um, also, Substance Painter, uh, it seems like uh, sometimes when you're doing things, you mess things up without even noticing. So, uh, it's, it's a good idea to check what you're doing from time to time to make sure that um, you didn't mess th things up accidentally. And I think it's a good move that the um, Substance Painter looks a little bit more like um, Photoshop and uh, the tools uh, that Photoshop uses as well. So uh, it's going to be a nice combination if they get them to uh, kind of bring the strong points from Photoshop and integrate them in Substance Painter. I think it's going to be a good move. Okay, we're going to change the color of the, um, the fill layer to something that looks like this probably black let's go with black all right so i really like how black people say black let's go with black <laughs> it's uh um, All right, so this is um, um, this is how the way we're gonna do it. So we're gonna uh, paint the the upper part in its proper place, and we're gonna do the same thing for the others for the other part. 
and we're gonna do of course paint the same thing over the uh, the other cartridge all right so uh, we are almost done here and uh, we're gonna change the height of this fit layer we're gonna uh, make it a negative height and as you can see it made it look way better than it was before this is the uh, the power of using normal maps and stuff in substance painter because it's gonna give you depth and height and beauty and stuff uh, it's gonna bring 2d stuff to the third dimension all right so uh, right now we're gonna use the uh, the same mask we used to create these um, the um, the Winchester 12 um, GA scripture or text underneath the cartridge and we're going to use it for the same uh, text we're going to use here which is going to be uh, the short text we're going to use here 9P, 9PEL uh, we're going to make sure that we're, gonna, we're using the right size and then we're going to stamp it right there very easily Um, it seems like this word is a little bit too big, so probably we're going to go to to the 2D viewport in F, F3 from the keyboard. I'm going to try to do it from this angle. It seems also that we need to flip the, uh, the text. We need to flip it 180 degrees, so we're going to go to uh, right click and change the angle to 180 this should do it also you can use a shortcut s from the keyboard and use your imagination to do it <laughs> i don't, I don't <laughs> to be honest i sometimes don't know how to use the shortcut properly my hands know know how to do it but um, my brain doesn't really know so kind of these informations are stored in my my hands or something of that sort so in order to get this thing right, we need to actually uh, separate this to two words. So we're going to uh, separate it to the double zero and the back section. So this is going to be separated into two. I think this is going to work properly because the angle is going to be uh, uh, smaller, I guess, or some of the um, more kind of, I don't know how Substance Painter calculates this stuff but uh, I think this is gonna give us a better result so we're gonna do the same thing here uh, the same thing we've done for the um, the other cartridge and uh, of course this time is gonna be easier because we know exactly what we're gonna do uh, sometimes this works when we have bigger cylinders and when we have such <clears throat> um, cylinders with a small radius it's going to be a little bit hard to get things right from the first attempt at least all right you can change the height or keep it as it is if you want to keep it uh, flat on top of the um, plastic surface it's going to be also okay and um, here I just want to fix this because um, this surface here seems to be scratched and um, actually the surface is damaged a little bit so we're gonna actually make things look a little bit realistic by removing some of the uh, some of the paint or some of the uh, printed parts and in order to follow with what is going on on the surface and damage and stuff and make it look as if some damage is really taking place here and I want to thank the person who made this uh, material for substance painter it's really amazing it's simple and amazing it's not even a smart material it's just a simple material that can do a lot of cool stuff 
Also, uh, here, we're going to remove this part because uh, I think it's going to give us the same effect we, uh, we got in the corner. All right, so um, I hope you learned something from this tutorial, and um, I hope you found it uh, enjoyable and interesting. If you did, please give us uh, a like or smash that like button, as they say. Make sure you, you subscribe if you are new, because this channel is going to be amazing in the future. Uh, or support us in pa on Patreon if you feel generous. Thank you very much, and I will see you in the next one.